Hey again, an overview for Phil Hatfield and a few other people who have asked me to uh, share a little bit more. So, uh, without further ado, let's talk about rules. Rule book. Biggest criticism right up front you're going to hear from everybody is, oh, the rules are difficult and the rules are hard and the rules are complicated and the rules are messy. They're not. Okay, the rules are chatty. And the rules, the biggest issue with the rules is uh, finding stuff. I've played 50, nearly 50 sessions of this game. It took me a couple of minutes to work out where it was, but it's not a big deal. The games play incredibly fast and they're incredibly tight. Five pages of rules, I think it's actually 32. There's lots of diagrams, line of sight explanations, combat explanations. To me, they're natural. It's a natural system. You're doing things, if you're doing things that are not believable or sound unrealistic, then you've probably got the rule wrong, unless you're using a hero. Three phases to them. There's three uh, segments to any given turn. You do your rally phase, which is all the things you would imagine you would do in the rally phase. You're recovering units that are shaken, uh, you are uh, uh, swapping weapons around and doing things like that. And then you have your operations phase, which is the guts of a turn. And that really simply is, uh, once you've done your initiative roll, you're taking uh, turns uh, activating units. And there are a number of different ways you can activate units. You can use a leader to activate uh, an individual uh, unit or a stack of units or all the units in the hex or all the units uh, adjacent to you if you're a, a leader. To activate, then you obviously have your choices, right? You can do nothing and uh, kind of sit in the opportunity fire, overwatch fire mode. You can move and there are various move mode types. Uh, then you can fire, and you can spot, and you can call in uh, artillery if you have it. So there are lots of different things you can do, right? And the game, uh, to me, the game rewards rational, sensible play. If you're going to run around in the open, you're going to die. If you're a vehicle scooting around in the open with uh, thin skin, you're going to die. You will be a smoking wreck. It's a very deadly system. Uh, if you're bringing the right forces to bear, and I think it rewards uh, it rewards the use of suppression, which they call shaking, and you keep in mind that the scale is squad level, and each turn is between two and five minutes. So we're dealing with 120 seconds of time. You've got a bead on somebody, you've got a bead on him, and you're probably not firing at anybody else unless there are extenuating circumstances, and we'll talk about that in a sec. So. Uh, you have your operations phase and then the final phase is the admin phase and uh, operations are ended when uh, either everyone's done moving all their stuff or we get two passes in a row. So uh, then you would do, do your cleanup which is just taking all the information counters off the board, taking the fire, the move, the assault move, this, the uh, low crawl markers, the uh, spotted markers and things like that, taking all those off. And then, uh, so that's, that's, your, uh, that's your game turn sequence. Now in every game that comes out, there are uh, specific module rules, and don't panic, it's not a lot. So for instance, with uh, uh, Forgotten Heroes, the Vietnam era, it's uh, literally two and a half pages of rules. So if you want to uh, know how to use your chaplains, or have special, there's special rules for Viet Cong, and then you've got your Claymore Mines and things like that. So very specific to the given era and all that sort of good stuff. So it tries to keep the rule book standard and consistent across every single module. So you learn the rules once, and then you're playing games from World War II all the way through to 1993 to Mogadishu, Somalia. Uh, Delta Force, Rangers, Snipers, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about uh, the combat system because that's kind of the heart uh, of the game as well. So how do you kill things? Uh, well, it's a very straightforward uh, solution. Each uh, counter, but each counter has a fire rating on it, and you take that fire rating, and uh, you uh, roll a d6 and add that to the fire rating. And if your number is larger than your defender's uh, roll, he's going to take uh, the terrain and a d6, and whatever what other whatever other modifiers may apply, whether he may have been moving in the open, uh, where whether uh, uh, he's in uh, you know hard cover or whatever the case may be, or you take the attacker's modifiers and the defender's modifiers, and then you get a net number. If the attacker's number is higher than the, the defender's number, then uh, you go to the damage table and you uh, roll there, see how much damage you have done to either the, the, um, the squad, the hero, the leader, the vehicle, or the aircraft. Uh, yeah, there's aircraft in this game as well. Choppers, jets, and stuff like that. And uh, that's all factored against the morale factor for the uh, the unit uh, is, that is being shot at. So the better the morale, 
the more chance they have of surviving under a given set of circumstances. So if you put uh, uh, so, uh, elite Soviet paratroopers in one hex and a Somali mob in the hex next to it, and one has a rating of seven and one has a, the other has a rating of four, you're gonna get two very different results if you were firing with the same guy uh, if it was shot at uh, one one turn and one the next turn. Well, one of the things I like the most uh, is the uh, scenario cards, which show you the map. Uh, you've got your little turn uh, sequence down the bottom on most uh, most of the modules. You've got all the setup instructions and any, any specific uh, scenario rules, special rules that may apply. And one of the most, you know, the excellent thing about this game, uh, you can tell I'm a fanboy, right? Uh, the uh, excellent thing about this game is the thought that goes into nearly every scenario. They nearly always come down to that very last turn and often the very last die roll to see who's going to win. They're nail biters. Even when you have this uh, you know, asymmetrical uh, set of forces, you've got very nice uh, scenario design and balance and uh, uh, scenario special rules are going to help drive great gameplay. Uh, I was uh, very reluctant to really get too excited about uh, you know, this Day of Heroes uh, module, I that stuff is great. And I wasn't excited because it's Somali mobs and gunmen and things like that, but it's really cool. Uh, the, the way the convoy, uh, Black Hawk Down whole campaign is, plays out and the way the scenarios are laid out, fantastic stuff. So, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the uh, modern era uh, of the, these, uh, these modules. Not for any particular reason other than uh, I've played you know, a lot of squad-based uh, World War II games in the past and I'm really, uh, really looking, f I, I enjoy uh, playing with more modern equipment and that really, uh, I get fed with this game because we have the Falklands War, we have Vietnam, we have this uh, Somali uh, Mogadishu module and then there's the uh, World War III uh, hypothetical set in 85 that uh, there are now two modules out for that and uh, there's also a uh, Pacific module which I haven't played a lot of squad based uh, stuff on which is on pre-order right now that, I'll, that I'm you know, hoping that's months away from being delivered. Uh, Heroes of the Pacific that's called, that should be very very exciting. Really interesting uh, rule set there for uh, how they treat the, Jap the uniqueness of the Japanese troops. Uh, so, uh, it takes all that kind of, the, the hairiness of uh, and frustrating things out of the game and makes it just gameplay. Two guys using fairly good tactics against each other are going to have a great time uh, play, playing this game. And like I said, I've, I've rarely played maybe a handful of scenarios out of the 40 or 50 I've played where it's been a complete blowout. And usually that's because someone hasn't thought about how they want to play this particular scenario uh, or has perhaps hasn't played it before. Uh, but even brand new players that I, I've taught uh, probably half a dozen folks how to play this game, uh, brand new players out of the gate playing the World War Three hypothetical, Heroes of the Gap, uh, get, get right into it, enjoy it, understand it, and uh, can play very capably from their very first play. So it's not like you need to invest years and years in this to be competent at it or have fun with it. So, All right, so let's have a quick look at uh, some of the components and uh, the charts and things. So this is Day of Heroes, because the map actually has the turn counter and everything on it uh, right down here. And uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, the town of Mogadishu. I'm not going to show you the whole map, I'm just going to give you a feel for things. Uh, you've got your turn counter there and a little uh, mob activation dispersal and roadblock generator there and then your terrain, uh, uh, your tech chart right there, right? Yeah, I'm the pieces, but uh, give you an example. Let's see if we can find some guys here that are worth looking at. So, You've got your firepower on the left, in the middle is the range, and on the right is your movement rate, and the top right hand side with the blue circle is your uh, morale. Uh, now the different colored boxes on uh, different colored elements, uh, different elements, uh, data points, uh, mean different things. So a red box, for instance, there means that those chaps can assault move. An assault move is a type of move where you can, guess what, move and fire in the same turn. Stunning, as you can see here, this is. Uh, a little uh, town ship in Vietnam. I'm trying not to bump the camera too much. 
rice paddies, hills, jungle, and there's different types of jungle. There's heavy jungle and light jungle. Rice paddies, uh, you know, the long grass, I forget it's got a particular name. And so when you're playing a game, uh, you have really two charts that you need. In fact, you really only need one chart. You have your player aid. This is your combat uh, results table. And all the information you need uh, about your combat results is marked right here. Uh, here's your die roll, your damage die roll versus your morale, and then the type of unit and what happens to them. So you'll be shaken. Uh, on the inside, you'll have a terrain chart. And uh, it also has lots of details, whether it's a tracked vehicle, a wheeled vehicle, uh, leg, uh, target modifier. And then you've got uh, all of your different terrain types. And, th and then on the back, you've got all the die roll modifiers. And you've got the die roll modifiers for uh, infantry units, uh, and whoever they're shooting at, or uh, whatever the case may be. And then you've got what they call ordnance, which is any type of weapon that is fired from a vehicle or a, uh, a support weapon unit or an RPG style uh, piece of equipment. At the bottom here, you've got your melee table. And melee is a function of the operations. It's real straightforward. It's a uh, combat odds situation, but it has some uh, nice uh, uh, nuances and tricks to it in that you all pile into a hex together and you pick a unit you're going to attack. So if I have two or three units, I, I will uh, combine all of them against a specific target in the hex and I will fight them and we'll roll the dice to see to see what happens and then we will uh, get a result. Ah, uh, you say that doesn't sound very fair. Well, it's not, uh, but what happens is then the, um, the your enemy that you attacked, they get to, uh, uh, they get to fight back in the melee and uh, they pick a unit to fight. So if they're not shaken, then uh, they can fight you. If they are shaken, obviously they can't fight you. That's one of the, one of the suppression style things that you want to keep in mind as you uh, play the game. And so both, both sides fight. So often you will have a situation where two squads uh, will charge in, uh, fight each other in a given hex, and uh, they could both very well die. Uh, the, the concept of heroes in uh, in this game is important as well. Uh, you can generate heroes through uh, doing uh, certain things, and heroes receive uh, cards, uh, and leaders receive cards as well, skill-based cards that will help uh, you know either balance up an unbalanced scenario or provide someone with a special uh, benefit. And that might be you know getting a re-roll a shot or. Uh, getting a bonus on saves, or being able to move faster for a turn, or being able to fire at more than one or two units in a turn, or whatever the case may be. Uh, this is a cool new chart that was actually designed by uh, a player. And it's been now incorporated into all the new modules that come out. It has every unit uh, that is ordnance based. Every unit and its uh, firing capabilities, uh, its uh, range to hit, and the damage it does. And it has how you go about basically conducting combat on all the various combinations. Small, Very, very uh, uh, handy. I use this all the time. If you've got this and your damage table, you, you can really go a long way without needing uh, any of the, any of the uh, rule book. As the... I think that's probably a good overview of the maps, the counters. Uh, we really didn't get into all the different specifics of the of the counter types, but suffice to say that there are lots of small weapons, RPG-7s, RPG-16s, SA-7s, uh, all the, you know, LRAC 89mm uh, 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 anti-tank weapons, and the, uh, you've got dozens of different French types of tanks, dozens of different uh, Soviet uh, weapons, all of the World War II uh, forces you can pretty much imagine from, uh, from the east to west, Dunkirk is covered, uh, the whole shooting match. The Italians are coming out uh, as well. So lots and lots of gameplay, hundreds of scenarios across decades of time. That's my overview for you. I hope you enjoyed it.